Hello, Private Diary. I'm Audrey. Happy is he who is happy at home, right? I was lucky. My parents and I lived in poverty, but we were happy and always had each other's backs. We lived in a poor neighborhood. I went to a regular school with my best friends. We didn't have any spare money to go shopping or eat in restaurants, so we mostly just rode our bikes. The only thing I enjoyed more was acrobatics. When I practiced, I forgot about everything else and felt on top of the world. I was the best acrobat in my group. See that guy, though? That's Richard. He was almost as good as me. We never really talked. I only knew that he was as poor as me and my friends. Imagine my surprise when Richard came up to me after mm -hmm. practice one day and said he thought I was the best in our group. <laughs> I saw the news about an upcoming talent contest and immediately thought of you. You should try your luck. He showed me a website of that contest on his phone. I felt faint when I saw that the prize for the first place was $100,000. I couldn't even imagine having so much money. Wait, why don't you participate yourself? <laughs> I'm a little sick, so I'm not in top form. Now that I thought about it, his cough didn't sound good. I told him I hoped he would get better soon, thanked him for the cool idea, and ran home to ask my parents for advice. Audrey, this is a great opportunity to become famous and win a lot of money. Go for it, sweetie. You are talented and have every chance of winning. Their words gave me a boost of confidence, so I registered for the contest and soon passed several rounds without any issues. It was time for the finale. Ugh, I was so nervous. The tickets were sold out and the hall was full of people. My parents and Richard came to cheer me on, so I pulled myself together and gave it my all. When I won, I, I could barely believe it was real. I won $100,000! Am I dreaming? <laughs> Someone pinch me! After my victory, I became a local celebrity and tried to think of things I could buy with all that money. To my surprise, my parents put my winnings in their room. My dear, you're still too young to manage money. Your father and I will decide what to spend it on. I didn't argue with them. The adults probably knew better than me. What bothered me was that instead of being happy for me, my friends grew jealous. And it showed. Audrey, is your crown heavy? What crown? What are you talking about? Well, it's obvious you're going to think you're too good to hang out with us now. That's ridiculous. I haven't changed. And I'm not going to look for new friends. However, my parents decided I should stop hanging out with the poor kids and try mm -hmm. to find some rich and successful friends to establish useful connections. Surprise! We used some of your winnings and transferred you to an elite school. Oh, I wasn't really happy about that. Being the new girl was bound to be stressful. However, I listened to my parents once again. Everything at my new school was amazing. Not that long ago, I only saw such beautiful buildings in movies. I was very worried that I wouldn't fit in. However, my first day there went great. My new classmates recognized me as the winner of the contest and were very welcoming. You're Audrey. I saw your performance. You're awesome, baby. Um, thanks. There were three handsome guys whose eyes lit up like candles on a birthday cake as soon as they saw me. The cheeky troublemaker Brad hit on me first. Did it hurt when you fell from heaven? Before I could say anything, Steve came up to us. He was the most fashionable guy at school because his parents owned a popular chain of beauty salons. Back off, Brad. This acrobatic star needs a guy like me. The next second, both of them were pushed away by a third handsome guy named Max. He took my hand and kissed it. Forget these morons. I have everything you need. Hey, who are you calling a moron, moron? They started arguing, and one of my new classmates seized that chance to drag me away. Audrey, those narcissistic millionaires have already broken the hearts of all the girls at school. You are their new conquest. Be careful. Thanks for the warning. I wasn't going to become another trophy for those heartbreakers. I'm not gonna lie, though. It was a little flattering. After classes, I got lost in the huge school and missed the bus. Damn it, I wish I brought my bike. Then, a gorgeous car stopped by me. Steve was behind the wheel. I'll gladly give the most beautiful girl in school a ride home. I didn't want to wait for the next bus for another hour, so I agreed. Steve wouldn't shut up about his wealthy parents as he drove. Still, he was cute if you looked past that. He tried to kiss me goodbye, but I quickly thanked him and got out of the car. Mom and Dad saw that a classmate of mine had given me a ride home and got mad. You're too young to go on dates. The nerve of him. Who was that? I told them that three millionaires at my new school were interested in me. They immediately stopped shouting and beamed. Millionaires? It's all right then, sweetie. Knowing people like them could be useful. I reluctantly promised that I would give one of them a chance and went to my room. I wanted to get ready for school but got distracted by my friend's messages. They had seen Steve give me a ride home and were asking if I thought I was better than them. I said I hadn't forgotten about them and promised to go on a bike ride with them as usual. <sighs> I'm exhausted. Why did money and fame make my life so difficult? The next morning, I realized that my troubles were just beginning when I heard my parents fighting over my winnings. I want to get a lip job and look like Angelina Jolie. Oh, and I want to have thighs like Kim Kardashian. No, I'm going to buy a motorboat. What had gotten into them? My parents were so busy screaming at each other that they didn't even see me eat breakfast and leave for school. 
Once I arrived, the boys kept fighting over me. In my locker, I found gifts the three millionaires had left for me. An iPhone, a Chanel handbag, jewelry. I didn't know how to react. On the one hand, it was sweet of them. However, it also felt like they were trying to buy me. The other girls at school glared at me. Audrey thinks she's special because they are fighting over her. What an idiot. The situation was growing tense. I had to do something before things got out of control. I wanted to talk to the boys, but they were too busy teasing each other. Back off! Audrey will be mine! Keep dreaming! She will choose me! I felt like I was about to lose it. After classes, I came back home and got ready for practice. However, Mom said I should go on a date instead of doing acrobatics. This gentleman gave me flowers and asked for permission to take you to a restaurant. That's when I saw Max. I didn't feel like going anywhere with him, but Mom insisted. Audrey, give me a chance to prove that I'm worthy of you. Yes, sweetie, give him a chance. <sighs> I had to skip practice and go on a date with Max. He brought me to the most expensive restaurant in the city, and we had a good time. Max told me that his parents owned a toy factory and promised to give me a tour of it sometime. At the end of the evening, we took a selfie and he walked me home. I'm crazy about you, Audrey. Can I kiss you? Um, some other time, maybe. Bye. I quickly left because I didn't like Max like that. <sighs> when I got home, I closed the door behind me and breathed a sigh of relief. I could finally relax and enjoy some peace and quiet. Unfortunately, that didn't last long. Soon, my parents started fighting over my winnings yet again. I want to go to Bali, and I want a new car. They argued late into the night. It was so loud, I could neither prepare for the biology test nor get a good night's sleep. So, the next day at school, I could barely focus and fell asleep at my desk right in the middle of class. That infuriated my biology teacher, and he sent me to the principal's office. I got detention and had to stay at school after classes. This is so unfair. I'm going to miss practice again. As I sat in the classroom, I couldn't help but think that my life used to be much easier. All of a sudden, Brad sat down next to me and smiled playfully. You got detention? What a bad girl. I like that. He nodded towards the window and suggested we get out of there. It's such a nice evening. Are you really going to stay here? Don't be afraid. I've run away from this classroom a hundred times. I don't know why, but I agreed to sneak out with him. Nothing had been working out for me lately, and I was sick of it. It was time to have some fun. As soon as the teacher turned away, we slipped away through the window. Brad drove me around the city on his motorcycle all evening and showed me his favorite places in the city. To be honest, of all the boys in my school, I liked that troublemaker the most. Eventually, I asked him to drop me off away from home so that my parents wouldn't see him or the motorcycle. Thank you. It's been a long time since I've had such a good time. See you around. Brad drove off, and I headed home. Imagine huh. my surprise when I saw my friends standing in front of it with banners. Down with Chanel and iPhones. Ordinary people live here. Rich people should move out. Are you out of your mind? What is this? My friends started shouting at me for missing our bike ride. Damn it. How could I forget? Of course, I tried to apologize. However, all they cared about were the expensive gifts I got from my admirers. I think you're just jealous. Yeah, right. We just want to teach you a lesson for getting a swollen head. I stopped huh. listening to their accusations and ran into the house. The next day was Saturday. I could finally go to practice. However, as soon as I walked outside, I saw photos of myself with mean words written on them all over the street. Mm -hmm. huh. Were my friends really that petty? Instead of doing acrobatics, I ran around the city for several hours, taking down all those photos. I was really upset and asked my parents for advice, but they were too busy to help me. I know how to spend money better than you. Don't make me laugh. Oh, come on. When would they stop? I needed to talk to someone. So I called Brad. He immediately got on his bike and came over. I wanted to tell him about my problems, but he wouldn't listen to me and said he wanted to have some fun. Let's drive through the mall on my motorcycle. It will be awesome. That's a dumb idea. I'm the one who decides what's dumb and what is not. Got it? What? Huh. That's when I realized Brad was a real psycho. He only saw me as a trophy. So I immediately told him to get lost and got on a bus. Forget it, we'll never become an item. That nutcase chased after me for a long time before finally falling behind. Phew. After that, I came to Max, hoping to have a heart-to-heart -heart with him. Imagine my shock when I saw dolls that looked just like me in his room. Max proudly told me that he had given his parents a photo of me and asked them to make those. I was furious. Was I surrounded by lunatics? I didn't stick around and ran away again. Steve was my last hope. So I called him. He suggested I go to one of his parents' salons to relax. Hmm, it couldn't hurt, right? I agreed. But as soon as we arrived, Steve sat me down in a chair and asked a hairdresser to completely change my look. I want Audrey to look like this. The <laughs> other guys will lose interest in her, and she'll be mine. Wait, what? Had Steve lost it too? I realized that none of the boys really liked me. They were just competing with each other. Those bastards. I told Steve to sod off and ran away. Then my phone rang. It was Richard. I was so glad to hear his voice. <laughs> Audrey, I was worried when you stopped coming to practice. Are you okay? I told him about everything that happened to me. The arrogant millionaire's competition, my friend's envy, and my parents' fights. <coughs> 
Audrey, you should just do what you love. The rest will fall into place. Talking to Richard made me feel better. I listened to his advice and came to practice the next day. My life was a mess, but acrobatics and Richard became my salvation. What bothered me was that my friend was still coughing a lot. I'll get better soon, don't worry. My so-called friends kept messing with me, and the rich heartbreakers wouldn't leave me alone either. Luckily, I figured out how to kill two birds with one stone. I took all the expensive gifts I received and sent them to my friends. It was obvious that's what they wanted. Then, I suggested mm -hmm. we go on a bike ride as usual. However, instead of joining them, I lured my admirers there. Mm -hmm. All that was left to do was watch the show. At first, my former friends and wannabe boyfriends mm -hmm. seemed confused. But then, they split into pairs and had a great time. They are perfect for each other. Meanwhile, I went to practice. Richard wasn't there. I grew worried and called him. His mom answered the phone and told me terrible news. Richard had a serious <gasps> illness. He needed surgery, but his family couldn't afford it. Tears stung my eyes. But then I pulled myself together and ran home. I knew exactly what to do. I sneaked past my arguing parents and took my winnings from their room. Then I went to the hospital with Richard's mom and paid for his surgery. It went well and my friend was soon on the mend. I can't believe you wasted your winnings on me. I couldn't lose you because you are more precious to me than all the money in the world. Soon, my parents realized the money was missing. When they found out what I spent it on, they went ballistic. However, I quickly put huh. them in their place. Look at what you've become. We used to be so happy. How could you let money get between you? With those words, I stormed away and locked myself in my room. The next morning, I heard mom and dad laughing and calmly talking to each other for the first time in a long while. Sweetie, we are very ashamed of ourselves. The wealth went to our heads. You did the right thing. We would have spent all the money on something stupid, but you saved that boy's life. I threw my arms around them. It was so great that they came to their senses. After a while, Richard was discharged from the hospital and I went back to my old school. My former friends showed their true faces and now bragged about the expensive gifts their millionaire boyfriends got them all the time. But I didn't care. After all, I realized that money had nothing to do with happiness. For me, what mattered was peace at home, my hobby, and Richard. Have you ever fought with your friends over money? Tell me in the comments down below and don't forget to like my story!